So on to the next presenter, um, who has probably the hardest job of the evening, uh, namely following Ed. Um, but I'm sure they're up to the challenge. And so please, can I introduce Alistair McPherson to talk about Plymouth Energy Community and their activities towards a zero carbon world. Welcome, Alistair. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I will introduce myself, so I won't do that again, but I'm here to talk about Plymouth Energy Community's work in the last, the last year and to I want to draw a golden thread that um, stitches together our work in the enterprise sector with our work in the artistic sector and to um, tell us stop and pause on that journey a little way just to reflect a little bit on um, the impact that we've had in, in the last 12 months. So Peck, what are we and what are we about? We're a mission-led organisation, a purpose-led uh, charity, social enterprise. We're actually a family uh, of um, five uh, enterprises in one form or another. Um, our collective mission is to bring local people and organisations together to tackle fuel poverty um, and the climate crisis. Um, we believe fundamentally to increase local ownership and influence over the energy solutions and we want to build confidence um, in those solutions and how the community can take control of them. But fundamentally, we want to help people to heat and power their homes in an affordable way. We're a people organization. So you know, the, the, the solution um, is not a technical one. <laughs> We've got the technological solutions to the climate crisis. And so we promise that we need the people at a local level engaged in this to make it happen and the community is a big part of it so you know it's in our name but we are a community we're we're, we're a staff team we're a, a team of directors and volunteers and we're a team of um you know about 600 support members and over 500 investors um that team is core to, to what we do and the central strand and to how we work So as PEC as a kind of entity, that's who we are, that's what we do, but what, is it, what are our enterprising activities? Well, fundamentally, they fall into um, two, two areas in that we're trying to build community-owned assets that have a role in the climate solution. So to date, we've been focused on renewable energy installations. Um, we've built out um, significant uh, levels of locally owned, clean, green, energy deploying stuff, solar panels. Um, in solar farms and on roofs across the city. And we own and control 20% um, of the renewable energy generation that happens in Plymouth, over 20%. And so we're doing that and, and we're expanding that role into assets um, in terms of housing assets and community-led zero carbon housing solutions. So enterprise in that space and we enterprise in the space where we work with people um, in their homes to sort out and support them in one form or um, another around how they can make that home uh, warmer, more energy efficient, and how they can gather the um, health and financial well-being issues that come alongside those changes. So in the last year, yeah, we've been talking about homes and that's been a big, big thing for us is to move into the idea of community-led homes and we're currently developing a project um, where we aim to build out 38 affordable net zero homes um, and something that is getting significant traction and interest and we've got interest from um, uh, the Innovate UK who are now backing us with, with our ideas. We've got interest from Homes England and we've a strong partnership with the City Council to make that happen. So it's not only renewable energy assets that we're now kind of enterprising around, it is also now around zero carbon homes. So those are our enterprising areas of enterprise and within those areas we have impact and at this time of year um, we take time to, to, to uh, do some sums, collect our data, we put our data geek hats on, um, you know, look at what our impact has been and compare that, um, uh, I guess, in terms of what we've done the previous year. And we share that impact statement with our investors and with our members and our supporters. And part of the purpose today is to, you know, to share that and to, to celebrate. So we're an organisation that's not been around for very long. And, you know, to be having these kind of numbers um, out in front of us is really something we're very proud of. Um, 
So yeah, six million, you know, six thousand million megawatt hours of um, uh, six hundred and ninety-one thousand megawatt hours of clean energy produced from from our renewable energy assets so that's you know over 20 percent of the total renewable energy generated across the city and when you you know that is a small community energy organization having that kind of impact gives us significant hope of what way communities can shape the change in these cities need we've engaged with and worked with nearly three thousand households um, um, over 700 of those households have had like one-to-one -one support from us and that one-to-one -one support has generated like 686,719 pounds worth of saved households that is transformative it's very easy to get um, forward by these numbers and then let you wash over you so I just wanted to talk to um, a couple of case studies that kind of unpick some of the kind of life-changing um, impacts that, that that can have so first one I just wanted to highlight was um, Nuray. So Nuray contacted us about some challenges she had with her bill. She's a refugee, she's got language barriers, which make it very hard to communicate with energy suppliers. So we worked with her through an interpreter to make sure she got the support she was entitled to, to and things like warm hand discount, the priority services register, all kind of to um, reduce the burden of that energy bill for somebody in her situation. But uh, language barriers had resulted in fuel debt, and so we mediated with her supplier to switch away. And with a payment plan in place and monthly payments met, it was clear that she was in a much better place in terms of um, that kind of initial ask. But our service went significantly went, went beyond that, and through the conversations that we had with Murray, it became very clear that you know a significant part of her monthly income was going out in optometry costs to her daughter, who had a significant eye problem. And so the work we did was take our you know, energy conversation onto another level um, and to work with the charitable foundation to secure her 12 months of um, charitably funded eye care for her daughter. So now Nare can stay warm for her bills and give her daughter the best chance of keeping her sight as she grows up. That's so much more impactful than that 686,000 number. The other one I wanted to share was Peter and June who called us about their cold, damp home. They'd spent money trying to solve the problem, but nothing had worked and they still had a significant problem. So we visited them and we arranged to arrange um, some expert help in there and we installed a solution that got rid of the damp. Yeah, that's what we do. We're an energy charity, so of course, that's what we do. But energy is always the start of the conversation to you know, help further. For us, that's a big part of what we're proud of. So through those extra conversations, we learned that June hadn't been working because of ill health and there was no benefits coming in. And so you know, there was a significant kind of struggle with their, their monthly budget. So over the next few months, our energy advisors campaigned hard and we helped them to apply for welfare benefits. Just last month, month we got um, confirmation that they were going to see, they had secured an additional £605 a month and that, £605 pounds a month additional income to them was secured for the next 10, 10 years. That's a £70,000 life-changing event. So that allows Peter to give up his job and do come June's full-time carer. So that's life-changing. So energy is part of the conversation we do, but the social and, and well-being benefits that we drive are very, very significant too. So that's our impact. Last year, say as carbon, as generation, as our numbers held, but actually that's the real story that we we are unlocking here about how you know energy around you know, conversations around energy unlock lots of other things where we can support where others can't. So what's art got to do with all this? How does that help? Can I move past that one? So we're a community organisation and we recognise that a lot of the conversations that we have around energy and the climate changes are quite technical and quite geeky and not very accessible. And so we've been talking for a while about the role that art can play in making, you know, connecting with people in different ways. And we did this a number of years back with a project called um, Cold Realities. Um, it's huge. And we took that um, 
But we started that with a view to engaging different people um, with conversations around fuel poverty. And we took that to over 25 different events. We took that to um, the Houses of Parliament. It went to the Scottish Houses of Parliament. We took it to uh, national conferences. We took it to European fuel poverty forums. We took it to the local government association. It was at the National Energy Action, UK BASH, European Forum on Social Quality. And that had reached over 2,500 people from, you know, from the event, you know, if effectively us just taking the opportunity to, to capture what was going on in fuel poor homes in front. And so that segues through to what we're doing now in that, you know, we've now got a campaign and Jenny's going to talk about this a little bit more about like taking our message on the urgency range, taking our message from Plymouth and the wider Southwest and the community energy sector, taking that message to Glasgow in the form of the huge art installation. So we've been working with Art and Energy for the last year um, to bring some momentum behind that. And we're currently raising funds towards that, which we'll talk about later. That's, that's hugely exciting. It's gaining huge, significant momentum, and it really does expand you know, the reach that we can have and, and that the conversations that we can have around energy and climate. So just in the last year, we're calculating that we've reached 3,000 new people through that, 3,000 new people that wouldn't otherwise be having a conversation around this kind of stuff. So that's a link to the Plymouth Climate Challenge Fund. So we're currently raising funds for that. Um, Jenny's going to talk a little bit more about that after me. Uh, but you know that is about trying to get £25,000 together through the Plymouth Climate Challenge Fund. Plymouth City Council effectively offering some um, for that and so we're in a kind of little competition with other kind of crowd funders locally um, uh, to raise um, the most as much as we can this month um, so please do during the courses this evening go to the Plymouth crowdfunder to site and um, the link will be the end make a pledge there's some amazing rewards and some artistic kind of gifts that can be made and some um, ways you can put activity in front so it's all about building momentum it's all about engaging in new work um, that's a big part of why we're here this evening talking about art and enterprise. 